Well, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this. I think, uh, you know, the the question we're answering today is, is, is paid advertising on social media worth your time, which is in some ways a very easy question to answer. Um, but then on the other side, an actual quite difficult uh, question to answer. Um, so I'll start off, um, we're going to talk about a lot today, uh, just in terms of um, everything from the larger questions to answer, um, how to jump into um, paid advertising, uh, what to expect, how to optimize it, um, and then kind of what's upcoming. Um, so yeah, so you know, just in terms of the objective here, we're going to go through the options that you have on all social media platforms, um, but specifically just because of time, uh, since these get pretty detailed, um, I'm going to really focus on Facebook. Um, we're going to be looking at engagement on each platform and what we can do uh, to build that out. Um, you know, I, I won't say that there's any cheats per se, but um, there's a lot of groundwork that you can do from the start and during a campaign that really will kind of grow that engagement and ensure that you're getting what you're hoping to get out of um, any test, whether that's something as small as $10 or something where you're investing more money and time. Um, and then, you know, kind of a easy question too of, you know, which platform should you do? Um, you know, I think it's easier to focus on, you know, one platform uh, specifically at the start and then, you know, kind of grow as you kind of start to figure out, you know, what works for you and what doesn't. So what is social media advertising? Because um, I think in some ways you can kind of look at this as content marketing, um, which in a sense any author, writer, publisher um, is doing already. Um, but this is a little different. Um, you know, it requires uh, some investment. Um, it utilizes information that these channels are grabbing. Uh, and we're going to talk a bit more about that demographic information, location, interest. Um, and then uh, how it works is that you pay some money, you promote some posts, um, you find an audience, and then that platform is going to utilize that targeting to uh, get the best group possible so that the engagement is as high as possible. Um, so yeah, and how is this different from organic social media marketing? Uh, and I think in some ways to look at this, you have to look at this as them working together. Uh, you're not going to just do one thing and not the other. Uh, they kind of feed into each other and creating content is vital to building out your audiences. Um, you can't just, you know, I think an easy thing is someone saying that, oh, I just launched a, a Facebook page and I have no audience. Um, I'm going to pay to get that audience and you know it's difficult to really grow from there because you don't really have anything to kind of build on outside of just that paid advertising um so yeah and we're going to talk a bit more about you know how to um how to build that um targeting is also extremely important to both things i think and this is going to be a recurring element to this conversation of really knowing your audience um who and I think this is for any type of writing of who are you trying to reach with this? Uh, who are they? Where are they? What is like-minded interest? Um, you know, this is going to be extremely important to, to anything you do, whether it's content marketing or uh, paid uh, advertising. And then the big thing too is you don't need to spend to listen to your audience. Um, you know, you post something, you look at those comments, you're engaging with those comments. Um, but paid advertising is going to reinforce that content, um, you know, mainly so it can reach more eyeballs. But then, um, you know, this is going to be just kind of building everything that you're sharing on your channel. So why should you advertise uh, on social media? Um, you know, I think especially over the past couple of years of just, um, you know, all the different news in terms of what people are publishing, internal teams uh, being held back. Um, you know, I think the big thing to know is that it is tougher than ever to get your content noticed. Um, you know, I think while great content is important, um, well, not even just important, it's the most important thing for any publisher. Um, at the end of the day, great content isn't just gonna reach everyone 
in your targeted audience. Um, organic reach is dead. Uh, you've probably heard this before, um, and you're going to hear it again and again, uh, just in terms of Facebook's algorithms, Twitter's, Instagram's. You know, you're only hitting about me maybe even one to 4% of your actual followers, um, just from your organic placement of content. Um, and there's so much content being published. I mean, I, you know, just in these moments, think kind of think as yourself going on your Facebook channel, um, and such like that of what actually engages with you, what doesn't, um, Half of this content that's being shared on social media gets zero shares. Um, and this is something that, you know, I think you need to expect joining any type of community that some things are going to get a lot of engagement and some things just not that it doesn't fall flat, but, um, you know, it's going to reach a smaller audience. And then, you know, a big thing also is that you want to reach new audiences. Um, that's what everyone wants to do. So the next big thing is the fact that social media advertising is cheaper than any other form of advertising. Um, this is, you know, true, true in a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of things that play into this and we're going to cover this, um, as we go through that. But, um, but yeah, uh, you know, these are, you know, I have some kind of facts here, but you know, and there's this chart to the right when you're looking at kind of legacy advertising versus social media that, for $3, you can essentially reach 1,000 people. Um, yeah, I think that that's kind of a very general, broad statement. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do um, to hit those people for little investment. Um, and there's really no hidden cost except your time. Um, and we're going to get a little bit into you know, how involved uh, these things uh, can get. I think in some ways, you know, an easy answer is that these can be as involved as you would like to make it. Um, and then 81% of the US has social media profile and it's growing. Um, I think that's a huge fact to realize that as a writer, as a publisher, your biggest goal is finding readers and engaging with them. And I think the big thing is knowing that you have to be where the readers are and the fact that they're on social media um, is extremely important. And I think we should answer why shouldn't you advertise. Um, obviously, I'm going to, the rest of the way, um, touch upon the other side of this argument. But I think, I think, you know, I think we should discuss that. Social media advertising requires time and attention. Um, you need to know what you're going to invest. Um, and we're going to cover kind of the questions you need to ask yourself and answer. Um, but it does require time and attention if you want it to succeed as much as possible. Um, depending on your targeting, and we're going to touch upon this a lot as well, uh, your ads may reach an audience that is irrelevant to uh, what you're doing. Um, and it, we're going to cover this uh, really in depth, especially targeting. Um, and then, you know, a big, an easy thing to, for people to do is to really over target their audience. And what will happen there is you're going to hit too small of an audience and you're going to run the risk of ad fatigue because someone's going to go on their Facebook channel over and over and see your same ad over and over. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, ways to kind of avoid that, um, both kind of, you know, different creative to use and how you target uh, different advertising. So what should you ask yourself? Um, and we're going to spend a lot of time on this in terms of kind of, you know, I, I look at these as five questions of who, what, when, where, and why. Uh, who is your target audience? And we've, I've kind of already mentioned this, but, you know, who do you want to reach? And who are you reaching? Uh, there's so much you can do um, with social media advertising. I mean, you know, kind of an easy thing to say is that, uh, social media channels actually know more about uh, their users than the user actually knows themselves. And I think there is some odd truth to that. Um, but you need to know, you know, who do you want to get your work in front of? Uh, and these are just kind of simple questions, but you know, what, what are their hobbies? Where are their interests? Where are they? Um, you know, who else do they follow? Is there like-minded authors um, or books that relate to, to what you're doing? Um, you know, knowing who your audience is. And I think, you know, this, this is essentially kind of in any area. Um, this is 
vital to making this successful. What is your ad about? Um, you know, I think an easy thing is saying, no, I'm just gonna promote uh, my page. Um, but you need to know what, what's the information you're putting in that ad. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve? Is this uh, people to just click through? Are you hoping them to become more aware of yourself or your title? Um, or, you know, another example is looking for um, followers on your newsletter per se. Um, that's, that's, if you don't know what your goal is, it's gonna be extremely difficult at the end of any type of campaign to judge whether it was successful or not. Um, and then really make it clear what your ad about your ad is about and what your reader should do next. Um, and I'm going to cover this a lot that you want to keep advertising really simple. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be kind and say that you have five seconds. You know, a lot of times when you're thinking about the way that social media advertising is, especially on mobile, um, you might even just have a second. Um, and so it's really important to make sure that it's clear uh, what you're trying to bring to your audience and we're going to cover a lot about you know what you can do there in terms of creative that text what are best practices um, different things you can test as well when should you run an ad uh you know that's you know kind of back to my previous point that it's really easy to say that i'm just gonna i want to jump into advertising i just launched a facebook page and i want to get some followers um but you, you need to think about value when you're when you're doing any type of campaign. Um, and this is, you know, I'm probably going to repeat this uh, many times to really, you know, step back and think: if you were seeing this ad, uh, would you react to it? Um, is this going to increase awareness before a book launch? Are you going on tour, and this is going to be targeted to the locations that you're going? Um, are you promoting a book giveaway or contest? Um, and there's a lot of different things, um, but you really should have something specific in mind instead of general, because if you're just timing this for general awareness, um, an audience might not be driven to click right at that moment. And that's kind of, you know, I think that's a big goal in anything you do is ensuring that what you post is going to make someone react right at that moment where's your audience um you know and i i already warned that we're going to be covering a lot about you know that targeting but where are where's your audience most active on the internet um are they on facebook are they on twitter is, is it more visual and they're on instagram or pinterest um you know i think this kind of goes back to really knowing who your audience is and then really exploring where they are so that you know that you're targeting them the best way possible um, because the worst thing you do is spend, you know, even just a little money, it's still money um, and not reaching an audience and just kind of having a campaign fall apart and then you never really do it again. Because um, I think there's a lot of ways to to actually make this you know, successful. And why should your audience care about your ad? And, you know, this is, once again, stepping back and really kind of understanding of, you know, why is this valuable for your audience and then even more importantly is why is this ad valuable for you um and this ties back to you know why are you doing this what is it timed against um are you hoping to get more people at your book event um are you hoping people to pre-order your book um when it's released um you know and it could be just as simple as you want some clicks and you want people to engage with your site but you know i think you just this will help to judge what your goal is and then how you at the end of a campaign see whether it was successful or not so what makes an effective social media ad and um i just want to say i do see some of the questions on there and i will um just kind of after each section uh take a moment look at those questions see if they relate or whether we'll um answer those at the end of the presentation um and then also just feel free to kind of throw questions that are relevant to each section um so yeah what makes an effective social media ad uh and i think you know I, I should say some of these things are probably going to seem pretty generic and expected but i think it's important to reiterate it because it's surprising how many ads you see that don't follow these um so yeah they need to be visually appealing um you know we're, we're in the art of words but you know imagery is extremely important especially on social media um People are looking at an image instead of stopping and reading that text to, you know, if you're swiping up and down your newsfeed, 
a photo is what is going to attract you to stop and actually engage with that post, whether it's to read it or to click through. Um, and text is just, for the most part, for most audiences, not going to get across the message that you're hoping to get. Um, and this is, you know, the, some of these elements kind of play outside of social media. Articles with images get an extru you know, almost double the amount of views, and that's extremely important to remember. Um, and to really think when you're doing any kind of campaign like this that you, know, you should also have that visual in mind. Um, and then, yeah, attention spans are sure and never, and you know, it's kind of the same that um, uh, you know, there's more and more content, it's harder to get eyeballs out there. It's just there's a lot to compete against. And so you know, we're going to be going over ways to ensure that you do get in front of that audience. Make sure it's relevant to your target audience. Um, so, you know, this kind of ties a little bit to knowing, you know, before discussing that audience and, and who they are. Um, but I think also just when you're trying, starting to explore audiences outside of, you know, your normal engagement, um, you need to ensure that this is actually going to be valuable to their day. Um, you know, Two billion people use Facebook every month. Um, I think it's something like 1.3 every day. Uh, so it's a lot of people and it's extremely easy to go broad and cast a wide net uh, when you're creating your target audience. But I think something that we're going to talk a lot about is really focusing on a smaller audience, really engaging and seeing the, what works and what doesn't, and then kind of expanding that um, as you go. And this just naturally, you know, just ties of learning about where your audience is, what's their interest, what's their behavior, because that's going to ensure that you're creating stronger messaging um, in your campaigns. So value proposition, while this sounds like an extremely marketing term, which it is, um, yeah, I think this goes back to that value that it's ex immediate what your audience is going to get out of this post. Uh, the worst thing you can do is post something really appealing, really relevant to your audience, and they click through, and then they find something that um, is not what they're expecting. Um, that's not only going to turn them off immediately, but they might never actually engage uh, again with what you're promoting. Um, and then this ties into that short time span that you have less than five seconds to really get across your point to um, to that audience. And here I'm going to just look at some of the questions just to ensure that nothing is uh, right here. So let's see. Ah, okay. So, you know, I'm going to, I see Louise Julie asked, um, you know, what are some easy tools to use to create basic images? Um, is it worth the outsource? Um, you know, Right, this is kind of goes back into that time investment um, and then right uh, money investment. And I think, you know, there are resources you can look, you know, there's a lot of services um, and that, I'm not going to go into too much detail and I think we can figure out a way afterwards to kind of follow up of like specific services you can use. But I think, um, you know, when you're talking about graphics and such, I think if you're going to go into um, you know, try a test of some type of social media advertising that this should really be part of your decision. I think all the elements that we're going to discuss is going to be extremely important to any campaign you do to ensure that, um, you know, it, it's actually going to work. Um, and I think, you know, if you're going to invest, you know, money into promoting that post, it's also important to then, you know, every element to make that happen um, to ensure uh, that, that every element is is there kind of 100%. I, we're gonna touch a little bit later on just in terms of kind of best practices for those graphic images. So in some ways you should also not think that it has to be, you know, the most graphically designed image possible. Um, and, but we'll, we'll cover that a little bit. Um, so then uh, the next question is, uh, or next point is a clear call to action. Um, and this is whether that's in the text above, um, if you have a button that you include on your link, um, you just you need to make sure that uh, readers know what to do next. Um, you know, the, the worst thing you could do is make this really visual post, um, and then there's nothing clear to do next. They see it, they read it, and then they move on. So where should you advertise? Um, so I think 
there's a lot of different places you can you can go and i think there there's a lot of we could spend hours and days talking about all the different channels for today's discussion just because of time limits i'm going to focus on facebook instagram and twitter uh, specifically facebook just to kind of look at the back end um and then a little bit about uh the benefits of instagram and twitter um and at the end i'll talk a little bit about you know snapchat and pinterest um you know i think some of the depending on the work is gonna you know the type type of work that you're promoting that's going to really judge um where you're going to promote especially the audience that you're trying to attract um but i think for facebook it's going to be a good example of seeing kind of on the back end what you can do uh how you can target um and all the different elements that go uh into advertising and then uh, just to answer really quickly, I so, saw uh, Don Glicksman, or Glickstein ask, uh, how can we get a copy of your slides afterwards? We'll figure out, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, Authors Guild to figure out a way to get uh, the deck to you. Um, and I'll, my email will also be at the end. Um, it was at the beginning too. Um, and I'll uh, remind everyone at the end of the uh, presentation because you can just email me directly as well. All right, so where to advertise? Um, so Facebook, I assume, you know, let's, let's, let's be safe and assume that probably most of us are on there already, uh, whether it's an actual professional page or your personal page. Um, but it is, it is by far not only the best platform to join in and start testing because there's so many users on there and uh, their types of targeting that you can do is so robust. Um, but so many people are already doing it that it's really also easy to see a lot of resources when you're going through these um, to see what works, what doesn't, um, and to kind of fine tune. You know, I think that's one thing to really understand as we go through all of this is that uh, this is a lot of trial and error. Um, I'm gonna talk about best practices, but at the end of the day, it's trying, seeing what works for you, because um, no, campaign is going to be the same for anyone, um, whether it's a writer or a publisher or anything, even outside a restaurant, um, all the different categories, every campaign is going to be different. Um, and so, you know, pros and cons of, of uh, Facebook, and I'm going to talk about this for every platform. Uh, Facebook allows the most advanced targeting uh, possible, um, and this is extremely important for any campaign. Uh, the versatility of content that you can promote, um, and this is, you know, I'm not gonna to focus too much on a lot of the kind of interactive. We'll touch a little bit at the end, just in terms of kind of looking ahead and what's really building up in social media advertising and content marketing. Um, but you know, you're gonna be able to promote video, slideshows, infographics. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can market your materials, um, whether it's a general campaign or a really specific piece of content. Um, and then the analytics are extremely robust. Um, you know, if you do have a page already, you can see some of those an analytics in your insights tab, um, just to see where that audience is coming from, uh, where they're engaged, uh, when, um, which is also an extremely important thing to know, uh, when your audience is actually really engaging with your page, because um, that helps to know when you should also target. Um, either your paid advertising or just any of your content uh, that you're marketing. I think some of the cons is out of most of the larger social media channels, the audience is increasingly older. Um, you know, depending on where you read, you know, you're, you're looking at kind of low 30s, which, you know, something like Snapchat is extremely younger. So, you know, this also goes into, you know, that audience and really knowing who you're trying to attract um, to know what channel you should go. Um, Campaigns can be time consuming. We're gonna talk a lot about, you know, all the elements that go into it. Um, and I'm gonna say time and again that, you know, you can, you can invest a lot of time. And I think, you know, there's a benefit to investing um, because the more you invest, especially once you start a campaign, the more that you can tweak and ensure that you're hitting the right audience and that um, the best things are, are working and that the things that aren't working that you edit and fix those. Um, and then, yeah, there's limited copy space. We're going to touch a little bit. And this kind of uh, goes back to the graphic comment of um, things, limitations you have and, um, you know, best practices. Because uh, Facebook does um, have a lot of different, um, you know, kind of guidelines of, you know, what's going to get the biggest, uh, you know, biggest push out of their end. Um, you know, a good example is if you have a lot of text in the imagery uh, that Facebook is going to um, 
not so much punished, but it's not going to reach as wide an audience as um, something that has a much larger image with less text. Um, and also just maybe you don't hear it, but uh, since I'm calling, I'm doing this from New York, you might hear some background noise and I apologize for that. Instagram, uh, Instagram, you know, I think in some ways we're going to touch a lot about this because uh, Facebook owns Instagram. And so a lot of the same resources you can use um, for Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Um, and then it is the fastest growing social network. Uh, you know, likely many of you are also on it. Um, but I think it's a really great platform, especially if you have a great visual. Um, you know, I think a couple years ago, it was a little difficult to really connect um, the content that you were sharing on there um, and then actually linking out to somewhere external. Um, but, you know, over the past year, they've really grown that. Um, and they're going to continue to grow that. So, you know, I think it's an easy thing to dismiss Instagram that it's it's solely kind of very internal in terms of the engagement, but in actuality, you can see it as a great content marketing term, uh, a tool. And then, you know, a big thing is that Instagram users are more likely to comment and engage with a post. Um, and I think the you can say that there's definitely going to be an overlap of you know users that are kind of on all networks. Um, you know, myself, I use all different channels for different um, things, but I think you know, you, you should target um, the types of advertising you're doing to what works best in those channels. We're going to talk a little bit about that um, as well, but I think that's also relevant to any type of um, content that you're sharing that you should really know what's relevant to the audience, what is shared best there, um, and what people actually engage with. Um, so yeah, so Instagram, it's extremely easy to use, appeals to a wide audience. Um, as long as you do it right, it, it feels really authentic to the community. I think that's probably something I can say on Facebook that um, an ad can seem a little jarring. Um, you know, it's kind of the old television commercial versus an actual television program. I think an Instagram ad could actually feel um, extremely um, authentic to um, everything that's in there as you're going through a feed. Um, and it's because it's visual appealing, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot less negativity. I think that's something else that you can be fearful of something like Twitter or Facebook that, um, you know, people can start commenting negatively. And I think Instagram, in some ways it's, it's how it's visually shown, uh, that comments don't show up automatically when you're going through the feed. But, um, you know, I think as long as you're authentic, uh, the audience is really accepting to it. Um, and then the cons is, uh, you know, Instagram is definitely primarily used for smartphones. Um, desktop version is, I mean, there is a desktop version. It definitely doesn't have as many of the resources. And really, this is a, this is a, you know, this is a mobile um, network. And I think something, and this is going to be touched upon a lot too, is that, you know, any campaign you're doing, you really need to think about that mobile audience, um, especially where you're leading them to, to make sure it's mobile optimized. I'm not going to talk too much in terms of, you know, websites and such like that, but that's extremely important because that's essentially where um, a, a good amount of your audience right now and increasingly where my audience is going to be coming from. And then, um, you know, some of the same cons as Facebook of this can be extremely time consuming. Um, and then just to quickly ask uh, Marlene uh, Kokax to just kind of general top user age ranges per platform. You know, there, there's a lot of different answers. I'm, I'll, I don't have the exact numbers and I could, I could give that afterwards. But I think, you know, if you're looking at, you know, kind of top tier down, you're, you're looking at kind of Facebook, Twitter. In, in some ways, I should probably say that in some ways, kind of the channels that have been, been around longer in some ways. Um, are definitely hitting a older audience versus the kind of newer ones. But, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn uh, are definitely hitting the older audiences, especially LinkedIn. I think I'm not going to touch too much upon that today. I think, you know, that definitely ties into knowing your audience. And if, right, you're doing something extremely, you know, business oriented or entrepreneurial, that LinkedIn is a great platform for that. But that's definitely hitting kind of a older audience than something like Snapchat and Instagram, which is definitely hitting that um, teens and early 20s audience. Um, you know, and there's always going to be overlaps. And I think, you know, the, the joke that everyone's parent and grandparent are now on social media channels, I think in some ways, you know, it's, it's silly to think that there's only those windows because um, you can target um, those older audiences. But there's definitely, you know, broadly, uh, 
older audience on something like Facebook and LinkedIn versus Snapchat. And then Twitter. Uh, Twitter definitely gets a lot of, I think recently too, a lot of slack um, just in terms of, you know, the worth of it, um, how much content shared there, is it actually important to advertise there? I mean, it's definitely a smaller audience than Facebook and Instagram, but I think there is a lot of benefits to Twitter, I think just as a general user. Um, but I think also on the paid side that there is um, areas to really, um, you know, invest in. I think you have to be very specific of those campaigns. Um, I, I wouldn't do Twitter for just a broad uh, campaign, but, um, you know, it's, it's definitely where people go for breaking news. Um, and I think it's a great place, especially for authors, writers, and, you know, on the marketing, more marketing side brands to really engage uh, with the user very one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of built to um, directly comment um, with another user uh, versus, you know, a Facebook post and then, you know, someone might comment and then you can comment after, but it's much easier on a platform like that to kind of post something and then to kind of let it um, go with its life of its own. Um, Twitter, Twitter's definitely, you know, I think Twitter in some ways requires more time um, to really engage that audience, but, you know, it's kind of, I'm going to repeat it over the, you know, if you invest the time, you're going to see the return from it. Um, and I think a big thing about Twitter that you can't do in a lot of the other platforms is that you can really target um, keywords in specific moments, um, especially using hashtags. Um, so something that, you know, is happening right at that moment, you can really target that and ensure that you're kind of aligning with that conversation. I think you should be extremely careful when you're doing that because you should make sure that it's relevant to the topic at hand versus trying to just jump into something that's getting a lot of eyeballs. Um, but it can be extremely um, beneficial to, to any type of um, advertising you do. And I think, you know, if you do it right, you can create a deeper connection with your audience. Um, not only, you know, in some ways, Twitter is somewhat better to kind of engage the audience that you already have and make that deeper. Um, you know, so someone that might be generally reading some of your content, you're actually going to make them, you know, buy your book or go to your website, join your newsletter. Um, and then you also, you, you pay for the performance of, of what you're doing. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, you know, what that actually means in terms of what you're paying for and what you're hoping to get out of it. Um, there's a lot of different variables because um, this really comes down to, you know, what's your goal um, from a campaign. Um, I think a big problem with Twitter is because there's so much content and I'm, you know, in some ways I'm going to assume and, you know, you can answer if uh, you don't use these platforms, um, but that's some of you, have, you know, if not use it frequently, engage with it. But, um, you know, Twitter, there is a lot of content, um, you know, especially because a lot of it's text heavy. Um, it's extremely easy to be overlooked. Um, and it's not optimized for visual content. It's getting better. Um, they're doing a lot of, you know, advancements and I'm, you know, I'm intrigued seeing what's going to come, um, you know, over the next couple of years with, uh, with this channel, but, um, you know, it's a definitely a much different approach than something like Instagram. Um, and then even though Twitter recently increased their limit, um, the character limit, you know, it used to be 140, um, you definitely have much more limitations of what you can promote. So Facebook. Um, so we've already kind of touched upon this, but um, you know, this is, I'm going to use Facebook really to kind of show how to jump into this. Um, you know, for some of you, you might have already worked uh, in advertising, so some of this might seem you know pretty introductory. Um, you know, I'm going to dive deeper into a lot of the elements that go into setting a campaign. But I think Facebook is extremely intuitive um, in terms of how to set up an ad. Uh, you know, just our conversation here, but then if you do it afterwards, um, you know, even, you know, even if you're not putting any money down, but you want to really just kind of test of, you know, what this actually, um, you know, actually looks like if you're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, it's extremely intuitive. They essentially kind of guide you through every step. There's a lot that you can do in those steps, but, you know, the big steps that you need to do to put an ad up, um, Facebook really guides you. So that's kind of the big thing. And I bolded this that, you know, and this is kind of for most social media advertising that you can start right away. Um, you know, if you're paying, say you create an ad campaign and you're advertising on another website, um, you know, you're, you're beholden to, you know, when that campaign can start um, and limitations in terms of their inventory, you know, on, on social media, you can start right when you want to, you can start right after this meeting. Um, and you can see immediate results, which is great too, um, especially without spending too much money. I think we're going to talk a lot about how you budget. Um, but I think that's extremely important. Um, 
And so what we're going to cover is right how to set up a Facebook ad account um, and how you can start advertising. What's actually available? Um, what can you do? Uh, how to build that audience? Um, you know how you're going to target um, and how you're going to you know as a campaign goes, really fine tune and figure out how best to you know optimize your campaign and reach the audience that you want to reach. So Facebook business, I mean, that's, this is basically where you're going to be advertising. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot of different, there's, there's multiple different kinds of posts you can do. Um, you know, I think uh, there's, ad, there's actual ad campaigns, but you can also boost a post. And Liz Anderson, I see your comment about uh, boosted posts, which is perfect timing. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, those things too, just about, um, you know, if you're specifically for your question about an ad being rejected, um, you know, why is it being rejected? There's a lot of, to your point, there's a lot of nuances. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, but there are things that you can understand about ensuring that, that, um, that, uh, that it doesn't get rejected and that it's hitting the right audience. So, um, so yeah, so Facebook business, um, we're going to walk through this, uh, you know, if you do have a computer, I mean, you could also, if you wanted to follow along, uh, jump in there and, you know, kind of play yourself. Because um, there's a lot of different variables uh, that come about depending on your goals for a campaign. Um, and we're going to cover those. Um, so how do you set up? Uh, so since if you go to, you know, Facebook business account, I'm sorry. Um, or actually, I should say uh, the big thing, too, to understand is that you do need a uh, credit card uh, when you're uh, starting these campaigns. It's the first thing uh, they're going to ask once you get to that element. Um, you know, you don't have to, you, know, you can put a credit card and you don't have to do any campaign, um, but at least to really explore it, um, that's something that uh, you're going to have to enter um, in the account settings. Uh, and some of these I'm going to go really quickly because they're kind of self-explanatory just in terms of, and it's, I'll, I'll definitely share the deck afterwards. Um, but just in terms of kind of, you know, how do you set up your Facebook business account? Um, you know, you're going to go into your account settings and put the necessary information, whether it's your name, as you see here, or if you have a business that you want to kind of encompass this. Um, and I'm going to focus this just kind of on the single account, but um, you can actually have multiple pages uh, under a single business account. Um, so once you do set up, sorry. Uh, so once you do set that payment information, uh, you're going to want to set a limit to how much you want Facebook to use. I think this is something extremely important um, is that you can start a campaign right now. You can see immediate results. But also, if you are not careful and you're not paying attention to your campaign, you can also uh, sp spend a lot of money and potentially waste a lot of money. Um, so really looking at you know, essentially setting a reasonable account limit ensures that if, say, you know, you start a campaign and you're not uh, overlooking it, depending on how you set it up, um, to ensure that it's not going to just keep charging you. Um, you've probably heard horror stories, especially about Google AdWords, of, of people kind of uh, letting those kind of go, and then next thing they know, they have uh, multiple thousand dollars. So I think for some people, hundreds of thousands of dollars that were uh, spent. So, um, so yeah, so setting an account uh, limit is extremely important. It's going to keep you at ease. Um, it's not going to affect your ad performance as well. I think, I mean, in some ways it's going to affect if you do hit that max and say that daily spend limit, but, um, or whatever the campaign. Um, but in terms of that actual uh, campaign that you set up, it's not going to affect it. So what is Facebook Ads Manager? Um, this is all under Facebook business. Um, we're not gonna touch too much into Power Editor. Um, that's a little more, um, you know, I think if you have multiple accounts um, in some ways, or multiple pages, uh, that's that's gonna be much more important. And you know, it's kind of, uh, that's a whole separate conversation that we can we can cover as well. Um, so yeah, so, and I'm, I'm including some of these links too as well. Uh, you don't have to click them now, um, but just so you, know, you kind of know. Um, where to find this, uh, these elements, but uh, where you're gonna actually set up and then manage your ongoing campaigns. Um, and this is where you're gonna set up your ads, you're gonna create your ad, ad units, you're gonna manage your bids, which we're gonna talk about, and you're gonna keep track of your ad performance. Um, and then something else too that we'll touch near the end of the conversation is, you know, you're also gonna be able to A-B test, split test your, your campaigns, and we're gonna talk a lot about why that's important. 
So the first thing when you're setting up your first ad campaign is what is your objective? Um, you know, I, I said it's extremely intuitive to, um, to use Facebook, but you really should know before you even start is what you're hoping to get out of this. Um, because that's going to really judge how you set up your ad and that can affect if, whether it's successful or not. So you're going to see, I'm, and I have a lot of screenshots here just in terms of, you know, walking through, um, you know, and specifically focusing on the area that I'm, I'm discussing. But, um, you know, there's a lot of different objectives that you can choose when you're setting up an ad campaign. Um, you know, you can see here just a, a good handful. And a lot of these bring a lot of different um, options to what you can do, um, whether this is you're just trying to build awareness uh, for something, you're trying to bring traffic. Uh, to your website, you're trying to generate uh, newsletter signups, um, or say you have you know an actual store and you're trying to sell your book that you're actually converting um, those users. And this also, this is going to you know as you set these campaigns, it kind of walks you through. But also, this is going to really determine what type of ad you're doing um, and how you can optimize. So in some ways, if you're you know this is your first time, you know I would suggest kind of walking through this. Um, just generally, even before you specifically know what you want to do, and just start to kind of play around, like click brand awareness and see, you know, the options that come. Click lead generator conversion. Um, you know, trial and error of you know what you can do and all the capabilities you have is going to be the best way that you ensure that you are doing the best possible thing for you know for your ad campaign. Because um, right, you're investing money, you're investing time, you 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 want to get the most out of this investment. So how, you, I'm gonna use, I used engagement um, just for example, but you know, there's, a lot, there's a lot of different ways that we can, we can look at this just in terms of a post engagement, uh, page likes, um, you know, if there is an actual event responses. Um, but I think a big thing, especially if you're gonna really jump into this and you know, it's great to just kind of jump in and start this from the beginning, is that your campaign names really are detailed of what they actually are um, because you're going to want to track these as you as you go. And so, right, set up what's that date range? And I have you know elements here, and you know figure out you know whatever really works best for you. But you should know you know when this campaign run, what's the objective? You know, is this for signups? Is this for for a book? Um, are you offering anything from this? Um, and then when you're talking about, you know, how you're targeting, especially if you're doing multiple ad sets um, with different target audience, you know, who's that audience for each campaign? Is this, you know, location based? Is this interest based? Knowing that then just kind of easily as you're looking at reporting kind of tells you exactly, um, you know, how best to compare. And I think uh, Patricia Cox asking, uh, is it better for people to, direct to an Amazon page or to a book sales page on my author website. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. I think, you know, kind of the easy answer, well, let's, I'll answer now. I think the easy answer is um, really depends on your author website. Um, you know, how is it, how is it optimized? Um, you know, is, is it extremely easy when someone goes on that page to click and, and be able to purchase? I mean, you know, I think Amazon, for better or worse is, you know, as big as it is because it's extremely intuitive of how quickly it is to buy a book. Um, so I think, you know, that, that kind of plays into some of your goals of, you know, are you looking for someone to buy your book, but also engage with your website, then yeah, drive them to your book page. But if you're just looking for that immediate sale, um, it might be, uh, you know, beneficial to, to link to an Amazon page or some other type of, um, uh, sales page. So, you know, that, that really ties into what's your goal of the campaign. Um, yeah, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about that as well. So yeah, um, targeting, I think I, I you're probably gonna get sick of me, uh, talking about, <laughs> talking about, uh, targeting as much, but, um, you know, this is, this is really the most important thing and the most powerful thing you can do with social media advertising. Um, is who you're targeting and how to best set that up. Uh, there's a lot of different audiences on here, um, or there's three different types of audiences on Facebook. Uh, there is a lot of audiences uh, just in terms of the potential. Um, and we're gonna kind of walk through um, what those actually mean. Some of those require additional um, kind of, not, not even investment of money, but just investment of you know how things are set up, especially on your website or wherever um, you're trying to target uh, your campaigns. 
Um, but saved at audiences is the basic form of, of targeting. That's really where we're going to spend a lot of time. Um, and that's really kind of probably what you've heard the most about of targeting by location, age, gender, interest, um, you know, any kind of demographic information. Um, and while it's straightforward, as you can see in the right, it also can be extremely overwhelming by the amount of choices that you can target. Um, so really, you know, really knowing who your audience is from the beginning is really going to judge um, how you're going to um, target your campaigns. Um, you know, and we're, we're going to touch a little bit about, you know, the difference between broad and focused and, you know, what you get from a broad campaign and a very focused campaign. Um, so let's see. And uh, I, I see a couple of questions and I'm going to answer them after um, uh, this section. Um, so what to avoid um, with your audiences? And I think you know, I'm going to say this again, you're going to see, um, because it's extremely intuitive, you're going to be able to see kind of that potential reach um, for every category that you choose, um, whether you're targeting, so something like books. Um, as you can see, there is a potential reach of 497 million uh, users. That is a lot. Um, and it's, you know, some of you think, oh, great, I can reach such a large audience that um, I would never be able to reach um, with just, you know, basic content marketing or any type of, um, you know, uh, campaign. Um, but, but the thing is, if it's too broad, uh, there's so many different elements to to a broad um, category. So something like books, I mean, you know, we all know how many different types of books um, there are. So, so I think you just, you really need to understand what you're targeting, and then that's going to help to really focus in on, on, you know, what choices you should, um, you should choose when you're targeting. And what's custom? Uh, so there's a lot of different um, elements to a custom audience. And this is kind of, you know, I would start with saved at the beginning. Um, and yeah, as you can, I mean, you also see as you go through a lot of different things where it's updated or new, um, they're constantly changing the abilities you have. Um, you know, for a while, custom audiences was really focused on ways to retarget your website traffic. Um, and to do that, you would need pixels on your website, and that's a much more complicated. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that you should start um, by doing something like that if you're just jumping in for the first time. Um, but there's also a lot of different elements that uh, you can do with custom, um, especially you know engagement with that audience that's already engaging with your page. Uh, so. So right, so you can target people that have engaged with your content on Facebook um, or Instagram. I'm really focusing on uh, Facebook here, but um, you, know, you can use a lot of these same um, elements for Instagram as well, um, which is important because if someone is, you know, whether it's been to your page a few times or really engaged, you know, the most important thing you can do is continue to engage with an audience that is going to whether it's your website or your event or your social media page because you can always grow that relationship. I mean, that's that's the reason that you join social media and do any kind of attempt of, you know, whether it's content marketing or, or paid advertising is you want to grow the audience that you are reaching. Um, you know, and even once you reach a new audience by any type of campaign, you should continue to grow those relationships instead of, you know, building them and then kind of moving on um, because they're going to fall off if you're, if you don't continue that relationship. It's like any relationship. <laughs> um, and then lookalike audience, um, which is going to allow you to reach a uh, reader similar to your existing um, audience on Facebook, um, or you can create an audience based on uh, people that have liked your page. Um, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, but yeah, so let's go back to narrowing your audience. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm using very simple examples, and you're going to see as you um, go through a lot of these um, different uh, resources that there's so much you can do. Um, but uh, Owen, uh, there's a few questions about Boosted Post. I'm going to kind of touch upon the difference between Boosted and an ad. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll touch upon that in a little bit, um, but that's extremely easy to, to do that as well. Um, and there's a lot of uh, similarities just in terms of kind of uh, targeting and um, those different elements. Um, so yeah, so I think, right, 
you know, you can reach a broad audience if you if it is relevant, but you should also know that um, a lot of these uh, different targeting is also going to affect um, how much you need to spend to get an actual engagement um, with what you're hoping. So um, I always recommend, and I think you know, even even beyond once you once you start doing this more often, if you do, um, really focusing that audience to something small and targeted is likely going to ensure that you're going to get a better return uh, for your investment. And there is a lot of different types of ad placement that you can do. Um, you know, I, I said that uh, you know, some of this is also going to be relevant to the type of campaign um, objective that you have. Um, but there's a lot of different, whether it's in the newsfeed, uh, on desktop on the right column, if it's in-stream video, um, you know, now with Messenger, they're allowing um, advertising to, you know, advertisers to engage in there. So there's a lot of different uh, types of ad placement you can do. There's a lot of different creative you can do. And so I think really knowing, you know, what your goals are is really going to help and where that audience is, is really going to help to kind of judge where you should be targeting. Um, there is different effect you know there's a it does affect kind of the cost not a huge amount um and especially when you're starting out you know keep it really broad but um just know that you know certain you know if you target say a side you know the right column versus the in stream you know there's going to be a slight variance um you know right column's a little cheaper um because it's not as well one it's not as um right there on mobile and um you know it's not in the middle of content that people are most engaged on. And then, yeah, um, so there's, well, actually, to go back, um, as you can see, you know, there's kind of the automatic placement of ads, I should probably have said, you know, kind of beforehand. Um, and then the editing. Uh, I would say probably at the start, just do automatic, um, you know, except if you really know um, what you want to do uh, with your campaign or where you want it to hit. Um, I think. Starting with automatic is going to allow you to kind of know what works and what doesn't versus kind of hitting a very targeted um, audience because if it or a targeted placement because if it doesn't work, you don't really have anything to base on, you know, whether that was successful or not. Um, but yeah, so manual and this is, you know, I'm not going to go into detail about these, uh, you know, you can see kind of this, you know, best practices from Facebook, but just in terms of kind of, you know, what that goal is. Um, you know, I said this before that knowing your goal is going to ensure where, you know, what type of ad you should do and where you should place it. Um, and yeah, you know, whether, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to presume that we're not having a lot of, you know, app promotions here, but, you know, if something like that, there's different areas than, you know, if you're just looking for conversion or brand awareness. So, yeah, um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of, I mean, you're, there's a lot of different ways to advertise and you should really know your audience to know what's going to work best um you know i'm going to talk a little bit about some best practices um but i think you know since there's so many formats that you can use um there's a lot of different elements that tie into you know what's recommended um how that text should be um but you should really you should really know uh well actually let me, you know, I have a, a handful of questions to actually talk about boosted post. Um, and I'm going to have a slide. I'm not going to go ahead because it might be in a few. But um, so boosted post, boosted post, um, you've probably seen a lot because uh, essentially when you post anything on Facebook, um, Facebook actually usually alerts you if it's getting a lot of engagement um, to boost it. Uh, you know, actually, let me see. Let me actually. Oh, actually, it was the next slide. So I'll go back um, and talk about the ad. But um, so boosted, boosted is in some ways definitely similar, but then in other ways uh, different. Um, you know, basically what boosted allows you to do is if you posted something and it's getting a lot of engagement. Um, you know, something I talked about is that you know at the end of the day, organic posting on social media is only going to reach a fraction of your audience. And so by boosting, you're actually ensuring that a wider audience is going to be able to see that post and then engage with it. Um, so I think, you know, you shouldn't just boost everything. Um, you know, I think the easy way is, right, Facebook is going to tell you something's getting high engagement, which likely that then means that if you had a wider audience, that audience would also engage uh, equally. But you can also look at it as if you had, you know, a post and there's some 
something extremely important, you know, any type of event, whether it's a book launch or um, pre-sale, um, you could also boost that. Um, it, it's, it's, it's definitely an easier way to engage. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of elements that relate to how to set up an ad campaign. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's much easier to do on the go. Um, it's just not as, you know, you're not kind of setting it from the beginning, so you don't have as much control from the very beginning. Um, but right, it's, you know, kind of the end of the day, if something works, um, you should, you know, if it works and it's actually giving you a return on what you're hoping, whether that's page views or um, there's actually, you know, monetary gain from, from that, then keep boosting. Um, you know, I think that's the best, that's the best way is if, if, it, if it works, you know, if it's not broken, you know, there's no need to, there's no need to fix it. Um, and yeah, so, you know, there's the recommended image size kind of relates both to an ad campaign as well as um, a boosted of, you know, 1200 by 628. There's a lot of resources also when you're going through um, that tell you kind of best practices of, um, but that's just ensuring that, you know, when an image gets, you know, automatically uploaded as it's posted, that your full image is actually going to be shown. You know, a great example is if someone, um, you know, if someone posts a book cover, which is not uh, by any means that type of, um, that type of uh, image size, uh, essentially it's gonna zoom in and it's gonna actually look, um, you know, pixelated and it's not gonna get likely the relevant information that uh, you wanna get across. Um, and I think, you know, and this is something I'm gonna touch upon a little bit later in terms of, you know, and I've already touched a bit about, of, you know, copy and such. While a boosted post technically doesn't have any limit, um, you know, and this ties into, you know, knowing your audience and how you're posting. But I think, you know, it's really important to make sure that what you're posting is really concise. Um, so I think it, it's, a, you know, it's kind of the same best practices with, uh, an ad campaign, it should be really short and, and tight and sweet. Um, you know, you're getting a point across, um, you know, this is what that audience should do right after. Um, and you can see even in this example of this uh, promoted post, uh, you know, this is in some ways um, the fault of the, you know, for this example, Grove Atlantic for boosting this post, but, you know, you can see that the, you know, description of that title, the SEO is a little bit long and it's not as optimized for social. And so that's something to think about as well. Um, and let's see. Ah, so I should, you know, cause I think when we're talking about audience, uh, Ruth Spear is asking, you know, when we're saying wider audience um, from these campaigns, um, does that mean more of your followers or is it people that you don't already follow? So I think that also kind of ties into and because you're saying that a lot of your followers are not seeing your regular posts, um, that's because, right, Facebook um, and most, uh, I mean, most channels now uh, or most platforms, uh, basically you're only hitting a fraction in some ways, which is, which is kind of terrible is, uh, you know, essentially you kind of have to pay to play in some ways. Um, you know, it, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of elements that go into that, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, you posting something is, it's never going to reach your entire audience unless they're directly going to to your your page. Um, so yeah, so it, it's 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 you know it's it's unfortunate that, and I'm not going to go too far into kind of end the days of you know it's unfortunate that you know some of this is is you know definitely necessary if you want to hit an audience, but um it's something to really understand that um, you know if you have something that you really want to hit. A wider audience then you know really understand is it you know it's asking those questions is you know what's my goal is it worth investing you know what am i hoping to get out of it because right if you want to hit you know if it's something extremely important you want to reach that wider audience um and you know that by doing a paid campaign is going to reach that wider audience and i think it's 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 relevant and important um you know, and I think, you know, there's, there's a balance there. And this is, you know, I touched upon that earlier of, you know, there's also just, you know, regular posting, you know, people that are engaged with your page are going to be engaged with your page. And you should look at paid advertising to really kind of just, you know, build what you're already growing. And then, you know, to really target um, some of those messages um, for those kind of larger events. Um, and by events, you know, I'm kind of using that broadly, you know, not just even a physical event, but, you know, that can mean a book launch or, um, any type of any type of you know whatever you're promoting so just to go back um you know just to touch upon um you know some of that best practices so yeah i mean i think in some ways 
these seem really tight just in terms of characters, but uh, it's extremely important to um, it's extremely important to keep it focused. So it's really knowing what you're trying to push across, um, because otherwise, uh, it's just if you don't if you keep it long, you run the risk of trying to get too much across, and that message is going to be lost, and your audience is not going to engage with it. So moving forward, um, so yeah, what is a successful ad? Uh, you know, in some ways, this is subjective. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about kind of general best practices. Um, but really, at the end of the day, you, you should also know your audience um, and really know what they engage with. Um, so yeah, so I think, I think that's important. But there is a lot of elements to this of, you know, the copy, the imagery, how you're tailoring this. But, um, you know, imagery is important, but it should also really complement what you're trying to get across uh, in the text. Um, you know, the worst thing could be something that's extremely eye grabbing. And then it's about something that has no relevance to the audience that you're targeting. Um, so right in this example, you know, pen promoting uh, residency and there's authors and these are authors that you're obviously going to know, or at least a lot of people are going to know. And it's just, you know, just as you see that in your newsfeed, it's going to catch your eye because that imagery is going to catch your eye before that text, but you immediately want them to then read that text and connect all the pieces together. And I think, but, to that point, it's also looking at how you do your ads. Um, it's really great to look at ensuring that it kind of contrasts with the newsfeed, that it's not just something that's going to be easy to overlook. Um, you know, I think a lot of, and you know, not, we're not going to name names, but you know, a lot of publishing advertising tends to be somewhat similar. And I think in some ways, I mean, you are limited. Um, you know, I mean, we are trying to promote a book. Um, you know, most ads have a book on it. Um, so, what are ways that it can kind of differ? um from other things on a news feed and it's really knowing in some ways it's kind of because probably you are a great example of who your target audience is that um that you know you should know what you're normally seeing and then what's going to kind of stand out to you um and then and we're going to talk a lot about this in a little bit is um you know tailoring your ads for different readers um you know you shouldn't you, know, you have a wide range of audiences um whether how small it is or how large it is um and I think you should really kind of covet those those nuances and really, you know, look at what are ways to kind of tailor an ad to really affect that different reader. Um, you know, someone, whether that's a location um, or it's a different type of, you know, if it's an event and it has multiple authors, um, you know, one author might really interest one type of audience and another author is going to interest a second. Um, and if you're going to target that second, you should really focus the imagery on and the text on that one versus, you know, the other audience to kind of, you know, A-B test. And I'm going to talk a bit about that, but also just to really target. Um, and really write with that specific audience mind. You know, right, I said, you're going to get sick of me talking about uh, knowing your audience, but that's extremely important. Um, because you should, you need to know them and you need to, to convey that message to them. Uh, stick to what's important because, and I've said this before, that if you have a lot going on um, in, your, in your ad, uh, it's gonna be really hard for an audience to know what to do. Um, and then use an image with little um, or no text. Um, there's actually a lot that goes, there's, there's Facebook actually has, um, a, a surface that you can kind of upload your image to see whether um, it kind of reaches their best practices because something with a lot of text you'll actually you might actually get the ad uh, rejected um, but actually the worst thing could happen is it doesn't get rejected but it actually hits a smaller audience because um, you have too much text and that there's a lot of elements that play into that but that's something to you know be extremely aware of. And I think just, you know, and this kind of touches to the earlier question point of, um, you know, the creative and such that you should really be thinking about, you know, not only everything that needs to be conveyed there, but how best to convey that for that platform. Uh, something that's gonna work on Facebook might not work on Instagram, um, even though you can kind of tailor and target both of them um, kind of on the same back end. But, um, you know, it's extremely important to know that if you are gonna hit, uh, both platforms that you're doing something that, um, you know, reaches the, or hits those best practices. 
so yeah, and then kind of stepping back, you know, I kind of stepped a little away from kind of setting up the campaign, but kind of the next thing is really, you know, setting up that ad creative. Um, what you're seeing here, it's going to actually change depending on the type of um, the type of objective that you set up of what you're able to do. But I think a really big thing to know is that you're able to test multiple images and multiple ads. Um, and I think something, and this touches on that last point of tailoring to your audience, I think extremely important to really, you know, if you're going to invest the time to set this up, invest a little bit more time to set up multiple different ads um, because you're, you're going to be able to test um, what's actually performing best um, and then actually then focus the campaign uh, just on the one that's really working um, or the couple that are working and then kind of either edit or just remove the ones that aren't. And then budget because um, you know for we're talking about investing we're talking about that you know I think whether it's ten dollars or a hundred or more um, it's still money that you're investing, it's time that you're investing in. It's important to understand how to set this up and then also to really set up realistic budgets. Um, so one that you ensure that you know you're getting you know you're getting the return that you're hoping, you're getting the reporting, um, but also that you're not just um, spending more than you want to and then not getting you know the actual uh, engagement you're hoping. So there's two options, daily and uh, lifetime. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to kind of play with, with two. But um, so daily is going to, you know, these are pretty self-explanatory that daily is going to let you determine the amount that Facebook will deliver each day. Um, now, this is the amount now, right, we talked about kind of that depending on the targeting and the placement type the value of how much it costs for each you know impression and each action is going to vary um however slight but that's something to be aware of but at least knowing you know how much you're willing to spend each day um just so that you know, you're getting that information that you're not going over um and then there's also you know you can set up a lifetime uh budget where you know say if you want to do this over two weeks um you can set it up where you're spending x amount um for that and Facebook is gonna uh, divide that over that time period. And I think, you know, some of this also plays into how involved you're gonna be during uh, once you post, um, post an ad. So, you know, if say you're gonna post this and while you care about, uh, you know, the results during and after, but you're not gonna be able to spend a lot of time kind of tweaking and fine tuning, um, you know, it might it might be beneficial to look at you know setting that up of over a two week period and letting Facebook do you know its optimization. Um, but yeah, I think you know in terms of kind of best budgeting choices, um, you know I think right the most important thing is that you just and for everything is you need to be actively you know analyzing what's working. I'm going to talk a little bit about the reporting um, on Facebook as well, um, but engaging that's going to know that what's working um, and how to tweak it. So I think, you know, a great example is setting a daily budget, um, but don't, but you can actually leave the campaign duration unlimited. What this is gonna allow is that you're only hitting so much per day um, and you can kind of tweak that as you go um, and then stop it um, whenever you're done. But as I said, if you're gonna be more hands-off, I'd say set up a lifetime budget um, and then kind of go from there. Um, and I think one thing to be, uh, aware of too is once you do set up the budget type, uh, you can't change it. Um, so that's something to be be aware of. So what's going to factor into your ad budget? And we've talked a little bit about this. Um, you know, and there's a lot of factors. Uh, some of it we're never going to know because <laughs> because uh, it's an algorithm that changes constantly. I think. That's something else to be aware of, you know, in terms of trial and error. That um, there's so much that plays into, you know, all these um, all these elements. So, um, so that's just something to be aware of. But you know, what's that audience you're targeting? Uh, the quality of your ad, uh, and this is something that you know this touches a little bit about the creative that you're using. Um, but essentially, when you're, you know, especially as you do more ad campaigns. Uh, and, you know, probably, you know, a great example is on Uber and their rating uh, for drivers as well as riders. Um, Facebook actually will give you kind of a relevant score, um, you know, and that's kind of based on, you know, how your audience is engaging. Um, 
depending on the objective. Uh, so right, if you're getting a lot of click-throughs um, on your ad campaign, um, Facebook is going to reward you by posting, you know, targeting and being relevant and actually engaging the community. Um, and right, if you, which if you start to target an audience that's not relevant to that, um, you know, that's a, they see it as, as you know some form of you know uh, they're going to they're going to punish any type of you know, not abuse, but you know any type of campaign that's not going to be relevant. Um, and then timing, and this actually really comes down to that you know with a lot of uh, either traditional advertising that um, that uh, you know if it's during the holidays, uh, it's going to cost more. Um, you know, basically anything that you know it's kind of in any market that you know if there's more um, you know if there's more people competing, uh, the price is going to raise. Uh, and just to answer, uh, Don Glickstein asked, in traditional ad placement, you know where your ad is and how big the readership or viewers are. Um, how can you possibly know where your ad is actually running and who it's reaching? Um, do you have a few more questions, but just to answer that first one. Uh, so right, so I think, you know, in terms of where it's running, you know, this ties where if you, this ties into that kind of placement of, um, you know, if you know where you want that ad to run, um, then choose those options. Um, and this really comes into targeting that, um, right, there's always gonna be some nuances. You're not gonna see, um, you know, depending on how detailed your targeting is, you're gonna kind of know more. Um, if you leave it broader, yeah, you do, there is a little bit of a question. Um, and in some reporting, you can be able to see um, some of these elements, but, um, but yeah, I think uh, in some ways, if you know, a lot of things, and maybe this is a great way to look at it, is that if a lot of things are kind of gray, um, then that probably means that you need to kind of tweak uh, what you're doing. Um, because if you don't know where your ads are, um, you kind of have a hard sense to uh, really understanding what's working, what's not. And right, uh, can you really trust Facebook given its history of relying solely on algorithms? Uh, that That is the difficult thing of social media advertising, I think. Um, you know, there's always going to be some things that you're not going to have control over. Um, but I think this ties into the benefit, the re, you know, also the fact that social media advertising is a lot cheaper. Um, you know, and I think that plays into it where you're going to be able to jump in um, and start a campaign right away, uh, you know, versus, you know, a print ad or, or something. Um, and so, right, you know, there are some questions that kind of come into play, but I think if you're constantly staying involved in analyzing what's working, what's not, and tweaking, that's gonna ensure that it's reaching the audience that you want it to reach. And I hope that answered your question. I mean, that's a, that's a large question and you know, a lot of things are kind of difficult to answer, but, um, but, uh, but I think you know, it kind of ties into, if you know the audience you're reaching, target that audience, and if it's really focused, it's gonna, you know, that just ensures more that it's gonna reach that on. It's in, you know, I think in some ways that's the benefit versus a lot of traditional advertising is, well, in some ways, you know how big the readership is, you know, you know the circulation, you know who those viewers are. There also are a lot of questions of, you know, are they actually engaging with it? Um, you know, in, in social media advertising, you're gonna actually know how well they're actually engaging with that post. And, you know, especially if you're looking at, you know, whatever the action is after and really tracking that, you know, kind of immediately is um, people clicking to say an Amazon page and, you know, is there an uptick in your sales? Then you kind of know that that's reaching, um, that's reaching and succeeding the right audience or at least a new audience that becomes, you know, an ongoing audience. Uh, so how to optimize uh, your ad campaign. And I think optimize, you know, it's a very marketing term, um, but you know, how, how can you make this campaign as best as possible and there's a lot of different i mean everything we're talking about here is kind of optimizing um but depending on the type of campaign you know you chose and you know your goal there's going to be a lot of different um ways to optimize um to help target its placement uh just to go back so yeah you can see here just in the example just kind of post engagement impressions daily unique reach um you know it's really you know, do you want more eyeballs? Um, you know, you can say that, but I would say probably, you know, a big thing is, right, you wanna, you want actually people to engage with your post. And so Facebook is gonna ensure that, you know, that is what the, you know, what the algorithms actually focus on versus, you know, more impressions or just reaching the amount of people. I think, you know, for anyone, you want people to be engaged with, um, 
you know what you're what you're pushing and so yeah so you know for your first campaign also just kind of touching on the money investment um you know and i think this kind of ties into you know automatic versus manual for a lot of things um you know for the first i would i would try to keep things broad um because you know it's a new system, you know, depending on how experienced you are. Um, and I think also just kind of as kind of a base test example, it's great to kind of keep things a bit more automatic. Um, so, you know, kind of generally what you're going to get from that audience and then tweaking and targeting is going to ensure that then you kind of improve on that kind of base level of what you're getting for your investment. Um, so yeah, so bid and bid amount, ad scheduling, delivery type, keep those, you know, keep those pretty broad, I would, I would recommend for that first time. And so yeah, some monitoring your campaign. I'm not going to go too much into the woods about, um, you know, I think we could, you know, you could spend a whole separate hour talking about the actual analytics um because it can go really in detailed um but you know the big thing you should be looking at is you know how many impressions are being served how many people are actually clicking what is that costing you per click or conversion is also extremely important um and, you know and a lot of these are going to depend on you know certain elements um you know certain goals have higher you know average higher cost than others um and there's a lot of variance in there um but obviously, the less <laughs> the less cost you're getting per click, the the better. Um, and that means that it's actually you know it's actually engaging your audience, and your audience is actually acting on what you're promoting. And then yeah, I, you know I've talked a bit about this just in terms of kind of you know ways to to further optimize. But A/B testing, I think you know there's a lot of different things that go into A/B testing of what you can do. Um, I mean, you can go from everything from the image to the text to the button color um, and I mean people do this in you know other areas too in terms of websites or emails but um I think you know you any ad campaign can be improved um, whether it's the best thing ever or not um, or at the very least testing if this is the actual best that you can do um, by A/B testing, uh, and you, you can set up a lot of different ways, and there's a lot of different areas to explore. But um, but that's going to be extremely important to making sure that you're hitting that right audience and you're getting the most out of it. Um, and then frequency. So if you if, and I touched a bit about this, and this really ties into targeting, really also kind of not over targeting and hitting too small of an audience. That you know, and you can use this as just a personal. Per, you know, a person seeing advertising all the time, uh, that the more, you know, if you see an ad too much, it's going to be tiring. Um, so you want to make sure that there's kind of a fine balance of, of your targeting, but that there is enough audience that you're actually reaching. Um, you know, I'm going to actually, I'm going to touch a little bit about, you know, kind of the future, but, you know, I want to kind of go through um, some of the questions that have been asked and then, um, you know, please right now feel free to kind of start asking questions and I can kind of touch upon uh, a lot of the different because I think in some ways I got into some details. Some of this is general because a lot of this has a lot of nuances um, and a lot of different um, ways that you can kind of dive deeper. Um, but yeah, so, you know, starting from the top, Tony Christie asked uh, of a personal account and author page. Um, when I make comments in other Facebook forums, I always show up as my personal account um is there a way to make comments and engage as my author page it's a great question um and i i want to actually so if you're signed let's see it really depends on how you're signed in your account i'm i'm not gonna i will give my email afterwards and i want to actually follow up with the actual details on that um because yes there, there's definitely um you should be able to to comment, um, but I don't have right in front of me all those steps to to doing that. And in some ways, um, you know, that's not on the paid advertising side. But um, but we can definitely follow up on that uh, afterwards. So uh, I'll keep moving down. Ah, okay. So Noah Kennedy is asking, and I apologize to you if um. Now that I'm going through these, I might have answered some of these, and so I'll be quicker with those answers. But um, but um, so my content's currently focused on my online journal. Uh, 
I've been reticent to mix my Facebook presence with my blog audience. Um, controversial topic, yes. Uh, well, actually, that's an interesting area to talk about just in terms of kind of how this all plays into, you know, your overall audience. Because, right, you don't just want to be marketing all your channels over and over to your audience. But I think I think you should, you know, cross promote everywhere that you're publishing um, to your audience. I think that's important. I think also that kind of ties and I touched upon about this a little bit that every platform kind of has um, its different focus, you know, what you're doing on your blog um, should obviously be different than what you're posting on Facebook. Um, you know, whether it's just posting a link or if you're actually creating content on Facebook, but they should all complement one another. Um, so I think that's important. Um, so, and I think, um, so I think, yeah, so, but I think to your point of uh, promoting my non-Facebook stuff um, without blending with your personal Facebook, I think that ties into setting up uh, kind of an author an author page. I think, you know, if that's, if that's something where you want something that's really focused on your professional aspect versus kind of your personal, um, separate those, then that kind of solves that problem. Uh, you know, just in terms of, just in terms of kind of what you're sharing, I think, you know, obviously P, you know, on your personal page, if you have something very big on the professional side, you want to share it, but you also don't want your personal page to be, um, just a marketing area. Um, so separate those, um, but they should complement. Um, I think that, I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see, going down. Uh, if you do a campaign, you want people to buy your book. Um, are you going for engagement or traffic? Uh, uh, asked Susie Child. So actually going back, um, you're actually looking for conversion. Um, you know, if you're, if you want, if you're looking for just a direct sale, um, you know, that, that, that's a conversion. You want, you want people to buy that book. Um, and there, there's, you know, something I kind of touched a bit about. I'm not going to touch too much on this just because that's kind of a whole nother level, but of, um, you know, kind of retargeting, um, you know, something you can do is pixel tracking. Um, and you can add that on your website. If you use WordPress, there's a lot of, um, plugins, but, um, that allows then kind of for you to, retarget someone that engages um and actually as touches upon an earlier question about uh you know should you lead someone to your book page um or amazon um you know right if you send them to your book page and you have some type of pixel tracking you're going to be able to kind of retarget whether it's that book itself or any other type of um any other type of ad campaign uh to that audience on facebook so i think that's extremely important to you know you know, if you want to invest in that and really kind of focus the time, um, that's going to be, you know, that's just going to make it so much, uh, so much more robust in terms of what you're going to get in return. Uh, so Liz Anderson asked, uh, so I tossed about this about, um, you know, ads getting rejected. Um, so uh, do you have a suggestion for how to connect with someone? Uh, so I think um, in terms of, uh, well, there's two ways to answer this. If you're looking for someone at Facebook, um, I, I would say, you know, in a lot of these social media channels, and I think that's probably a con across the board is that a lot of these, because they're algorithms, um, they're not as direct with an actual person. Uh, so yeah, you're going to have, you're going to have some issues. Um, but in terms of, in terms of actually working with someone in training, um, I think, that's that's an area to look at in terms of you know if you want to invest um, in having someone work. Um, but I think a lot of these services provide um, you know a lot of checks and balances if this is gonna if this is actually gonna fly or if it's gonna be rejected. Um, so right, something just as simple as you know too much text on your image um, that's likely going to be rejected. And you should you should check those. And I can follow up afterwards. Um, just kind of you know with a direct link with that, and just kind of also understanding them on other platforms as well. see uh, a good amount of questions on boosted um and i think you know as i said it's pretty easy in terms of you know facebook is going to immediately notify you um if you should boost a post um which you know that's that's great um and i i think um 
you know, it's just, it's kind of differences in terms of, you know, just kind of reaching a wider audience is kind of the goal with boosting while an ad campaign is something kind of set from the beginning. So it really just comes down to, you know, what you're promoting. Um, and those can kind of complement each other too. So I shouldn't say that, uh, you know, they're totally different. They're, they're very much kind of feed into one another. It's just, um, you know, it's easy use um, and kind of something on the fly versus the investment of, you know, creative kind of from uh, the beginning. And yeah, and that ties into, you know, the audience. Um, you know, the more targeting you can be able to do, um, the more engagement that you're likely going to either get from that audience and then who you're going to reach um, versus boosted is really going to kind of hit the audience that you already have. Um, you know, since you're just organically only reaching such a small amount uh, of that audience. Ah, an anonymous with attendees asking about the effectiveness of Facebook ads. Um, and I'm, I'm going to also use this just kind of in general uh, for everything. But um, do they really generate sales? Um, are people ignoring them? Uh, you know, that's a, I mean, it's probably in terms of all advertising. You know, I think you should also be realistic about the return uh, that you're going to get out of this. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the amount of engagement you're actually going to receive. Um, you know, it's, you're not you're not looking at half the audience that you're reaching is going to actually engage. It's going to be it's going to be a small fraction. It's just but it's looking at kind of that, you know, how much you're investing. Um, what's that goal in mind? So you know, for example, let's say a book sale. Um, so right, maybe it costs you know a couple dollars uh, to actually reach that audience for them for the engage with the post. But if they buy your book for you know ten dollars, there's a you know there's a value there is a profit there, and you know you can tie that back to you know if it's just engagement, but you know um you know the amount that you're going to get from getting a new newsletter subscriber. Um, you know it's it's figuring out what's kind of valuable to you. But yes, that's a that's a long question that can get pretty uh, philosophical. Um, <laughs> so let's see, uh, going through, and thank you for all the questions and keep asking them. I'm more than happy to keep answering them. But um, yes, so Janet Ben's asking, is it possible to make it a change to an ad? Yes, um, uh, for an ad, yes, and that's actually what's kind of uh, fantastic about. Um, setting these up and it's kind of also you know kind of stepping back is kind of also knowing um, at the beginning what you're hoping to get out of out of your ad campaign you know any type of investment um, sorry there's been a handful um, so yeah um, sorry uh, in terms of kind of changing the ad yeah you're gonna be able to edit it um, as you go you know not everything I um, mean you know, as I said about like daily you know budgets and stuff but you can really tweak you know that text and and such and you know I think from the start just being able to a B test is gonna ensure that you're kind of hitting the different possibilities that you know say for example you have five taglines that you know taglines very advertising but um you know five text for the post that you know you might want to test out test test those out and see you know what's actually getting the most engagement and then you know if one's really overperforming focus the rest of your campaign on that that ad and you know kind of move away from the other ones um so yeah i think that's that's actually you know kind of if not the most um you know benefit to social media advertising but likely the most is that you can really tweak it as you go um so, you know, if something's really not working, um, tweak it. If it's really not working, just stop it. I mean, that's the best thing too, is you're not, you're not really investing in, um, you know, something ahead of time per se. You can kind of, you know, set a limit and then, you know, if it works, keep it going. If it doesn't, move on. Yeah, so is it better to boost for something like getting sales? Um, really depends on that post, I would say. Um, really, at the end of the day, uh, an ad is going to be your because likely a boosted post um, probably didn't actually tie to something promoting an actual sale. Um, you know, for the example that I used, um, you know, for Grove Atlantic, it was you know a book being announced as a best book of the year, so it's an actual kind of content piece versus you know it might lead to sales. But if you're really looking at driving someone directly to a sales page, um, I, would, I would focus more of your attention on advertising versus, versus boosting. Um, and no, 
keep asking if, uh, if I'm not answering these questions properly. <laughs> um, ah, so let's see, is pain, so yeah. Well, I think this kind of <laughs> was Sparrow's question on, um, you know, is it actually worth the expense? And I think this kind of ties into, you know, kind of the broad question of this entire um, presentation. Um, it really comes down to what your goal is. Um, you know, I think the easy answer is yes. Um, I think because you can start with so little in terms of what you're investing to pay. Um, but I think it's just really knowing what, you know, answering those questions of, you know, who, what, where, when, and why um, is going to ensure that it's actually going to be successful and that you actually have something that um, uh, you're actually, um, you know, is worthwhile investing. That's something that you're going to actually be able to take data from and, and tweak and, and improve upon. In terms of collecting information, um, there's a lot and I can share afterwards too, either just generally or personally, but, um, you know, kind of depending on, depending on what your goal is, is really going to judge um, the worthwhileness of, of any kind of expense. But um, yeah, the answer is yes, because it's so flexible. Uh, in terms of a reasonable budget, um, you know, I think, you know, that's a, that's a hard answer to the question because, you know, depending on your goal, but I mean, you know, $100, you know, $10 to $100 is something that you can immediately start with just to kind of, you know, I think in some ways it's immediately jumping in and um, immediately jumping in and kind of understanding the platform. Um, so I would say start small if you're going to do this, just to really kind of feel comfortable with, with the way you're targeting the audience that you're seeing. Um, and then kind of build it from there if it, if it really works. So, but yeah, start small. Um, and I think that's the best thing too about social media advertising is that um, you can really start really little. Uh, and then kind of build upon it versus, you know, kind of investing upfront, knowing the audience that you're potentially gonna reach and then maybe not getting, um, you know, especially looking at like website advertising where you agree upon a certain amount of time uh, and a certain amount of impressions. And, you know, you, know, you might be sold that you're gonna get, you know, X amount of engagement, but, um, you know, that's something that you're not gonna really have uh, a personal hold on uh, to, to kind of tweak and know. Uh, so Noah Kennedy's talking about, um, so, uh, a warning earlier about sending readers straight to Amazon because it might not sell well with local booksellers. Totally agree with that. Um, and I think, you know, maybe we used Amazon just because that was the question to him, but you can also send it to, to IndieBound too. Um, so I shouldn't say that, uh, you know, you should send it directly to Amazon. Obviously, right. Amazon is Amazon. Um, you know, and in some ways they've really tweaked of how best to optimize because right, someone can buy something uh, with just one click. But um, but no, I think that really ties into where you know where your audience is, and you know personally, yeah, send them send them to IndieBound, don't send them to Amazon. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, not to get too political, but um, but yeah, um, that really just comes down to where you want to send it, whether it's IndieBound or directly to um, a bookseller's page. And then, yeah, um, you know, last question, just in terms of references and sources um, to help with this. So, um, you know, I'm going to share this deck. Um, I'm going to share my personal information. I could also share kind of areas that I've, you know, not only gathered information, but kind of what I use as I do this stuff. But um, yeah, definitely. And feel free to kind of continue to engage me on this because because it's kind of, it's you know, it's something that really takes a, you know, I think in some ways the community working together makes it makes it better. Um, and just quickly kind of to go through just to kind of really summarize uh, the discussion is, you know, kind of what you're looking uh, towards and what, you know, things to kind of think about um, when you think about not even just, you know, paid advertising, but just general content um, that you're sharing that, um, yeah, you need to make sure that everything is really mobile friendly, um, you know, not even just what you're sharing on these social channels, but where you're driving them to. Um, Cause that's going to ensure, you know, you can have the best ad possible, but if you know you send them to a page that's really difficult to read um, on, on your website, you're not going to get much of a, of an action if it's signed up for a newsletter or buying your book or, you know, whatever the goal is. Um, video is, and you've probably heard a lot about this in some ways uh, for good or bad, but video is, 
I'm definitely going to be a larger focus on, on all the channels. I know I've really focused a lot of this on Facebook, um, but you can think of a lot about these, uh, these kind of questions on outside uh, just in terms of um, uh, all the channels. But um, yeah, video and that kind of ties into live streaming too. And you've probably seen a lot of publishers starting to really, you know, do live question and answer. And I think that's a great way to, to market, um, you know, to your audience and to really get directly engage with them. And that's something that, you know, depending on the service, you're able to really kind of track and really kind of on the fly um, talk to your audience. And that's something, you know, something like that, where while that's organic, um, you know, kind of content, you can really promote leading up to that or the video afterwards. Um, so yeah, so, you know, really to kind of summarize everything is, you know, asking you know, before you jump in i mean there's a lot of things to consider but i think you should really ask these questions and make sure you have these answers before jumping in is you know what are you promoting and what are you providing to that audience um how is it different than what they're already engaging with online i think that's extremely important um because right that's going to make you stand out um if what you're promoting is compelling enough to click um you know really and i said it before but really step back and think is this would this drive me uh, to click um, and to really engage with, or not even just click, whatever the the objective of the campaign is. And then, you know, how how are you tracking that success? Um, you know, whether it's monetary investment or you know the amount of people um, you know clicking and then buying a book per se. Um, really having that ahead of time and ensuring that you're ready to track that is going to make sure that you know you're getting the most for your investment and that, you know, if you're going to continue to tweak it, that you know what to tweak to, you know, build that up. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it. You know, I think I really only touched the tip of the iceberg. I could probably go for hours about a lot of these slides in terms of, um, you know, in terms of uh, things to do, but, um, but yeah, uh, I think, um, you know, I've shared my email here. Um, I'm, Jen, you can kind of talk about, about, um, you know, how, how this is shared afterwards. But, um, you know, I think definitely feel free to email me directly. I'll share the deck as well. Um, there's some links there in terms of resources, but I can kind of build kind of a nice sheet of uh, additional resources to use. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you. I hope I, I hope this was enlightening, uh, probably frustrating at some times, and it's going to be frustrating. I, I apologize ahead of time, because um, but it's trial and error. And I think the best part is that with trial and error, you're going to actually figure out, you know, how to reach a new audience, how to really target that audience, grow that audience, and, you know, wh wh however big or small. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, this webinar will be recorded. It is being recorded right now, um, and we will post it on the Authors Guild website um, later this week. So stay tuned for that. Um, you'll get probably get an announcement in your newsletter, your Authors Guild newsletter, when it's when it's up and posted and ready to watch if you want to look back at it. So uh, thank you again, everyone, and have a great day.